Over the past week, Sweet Baby Inc. has received a lot of attention, which I'm sure they don't want right now. Because, quite frankly, it's their own damn fault that they're being dragged into the spotlight right now. After all, they are the ones responsible for the Streisand effect of Cabrutus' list. And now, on cue, here comes the game journos defending Sweet Baby Inc. Coming fresh off of Kotaku, Sweet Baby Inc. doesn't do what some gamers think it does. No, one company isn't forcing diversity into your favorite video games. This article is written by Alyssa McCarte, and I have to say that I think that her profile pic is a bit of false advertising. <laughs> but that's besides the point. Sweet Baby Inc. is not the largest design company in the games industry, nor is it solely responsible for characters and stories in recent high-profile releases like Alan Wake 2, God of War Ragnarok, and Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. But good luck telling some gamers that... Okay, full stop. Let, let's talk about Alyssa real fast, just so you know the type of person that she is. When Alyssa posted her article to Twitter last night, Let the USB Twice said, Does this article mention anything about Sweet Baby Inc. CEO being full-blown racist? Because I have a feeling this article doesn't mention it. Where she responds with, Hi, you can't be racist to white people. Thanks for tuning in. And naturally, she gets community noted. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that I'm pretty sure that Alyssa is another neo-Marxist. And as we know about these neo-Marxists, they have no issues lying to the public and lying to you about what is really going on as long as they're going and protecting the narrative. And that's what she is doing for Sweet Baby Inc. Because in the article, several times, she refers to people calling out Sweet Baby Inc. as conspiracy theorists and that these are nothing more than conspiracy theories. Never mind the fact that in 2019, Kim Belair herself said, if you're not getting what you want, Go to the marketing department and scare the shit out of them. Um, if you're a creative working in AAA, which I did for many, many years, um, put this stuff up to your higher ups. And if they don't see the value in what you're asking for when you ask for consultants, when you ask for research, go have a coffee with your marketing team and just terrify them with the possibility of what's going to happen if they don't give you what you want. And the other thing that's not being brought up is the fact that BlackRock CEO Larry Fink said that you need to force change. You, you now make a point of, that's, that's an investment criteria for you. Well, behaviors are gonna to have to change, and this is one thing we're, gonna, we're asking companies. Uh, you have to force behaviors, and at BlackRock, we are forcing behaviors. 54% uh, of the incoming class are women. We, we added four more points in terms of diverse uh, employment this year. And it, if it, it, you know, what we're doing internally is if you don't achieve these levels of impact, it, your compensation could be impacted, okay? We're it, doing the same thing. And so it's just, it, you have to force behaviors. And if you don't force behaviors, whether it's gender or race or just any way you want to say the composition of your team, you're going to be impacted. And that's not just not recruiting. It is development, as Ken said. And ultimately, it's still going to take time, but I am just as much shocked as Ken is that we have not seen more opportunities and we're going to have to force change. Now, I want to point out that this interview from Larry Fink was done back in 2017, and he was primarily talking about hiring practices, but a lot has changed in seven years. And let's not forget back in 2019 that Anita Sarkeesian did the very thing they just said doesn't happen which is these companies come in and try and strong arm their way in. And she writes, Hey, CD Projekt Red, I'm always available for consulting because it sure sounds like you might need it before the whole of the internet drags you for what sounds like some potentially sexist representations, which we all know you struggle with in the past. And the problematic content which she's referring to is this in-game ad from Mix It Up where it depicts a... Well, a woman with a large phallus in her pants. The irony here is that they will basically complain when there is no representation, and when they actually do get it, they will go and find a problem with it. They basically called this transmission phobic, or it was exploiting transmission fluid. Which is absolutely retarded, considering this is a game about transhumanism. 
But this is all just a bunch of crazy conspiracy nonsense with no evidence of these people saying the very things that are going on right now, right? Right? Now, this was posted onto Twitter by Johnny Massacre, and it is of the Sweet Baby Inc. CEO, Ken Belair, talking about how they are wanting to get these people into gaming to take over. We work very hard to get marginalized talent into the industry to protect them the way that we would want to have been protected, to lift them up and to get them into an industry where they're too often shut out. And basically, I think to take over, take over, take over, take over, take over. That is literally her saying the quiet part out loud. This is exactly the thing that we are talking about. And what we're seeing right now is that they're actively trying to go and bury all of the evidence. Why would Sweet Baby Inc. go and private their Twitter account unless they have something to hide, unless they don't want this information getting out to the public. And it's the reason why they go and label things as conspiracy theories and people calling this out conspiracy theorist, because they know that the casual reader will not look too deeply into this and they'll go, oh, it's, it's no big deal. It's just a bunch of people making a big deal out of nothing when actually it is not the case. The greatest and most destructive lie is a lie of omission. And that is what we're seeing right now out of games journalism. And as I mentioned in my previous video, this is Sam Lake. He is a writer and director over at Remedy Games. And he posted this back in 2015. And as you can see, Saga Anderson was originally white. And when Alan Wake 2 came out, we found out that Saga Anderson was indeed race swapped. Now, who was responsible for this? Was this the game developer who made this decision? Was it because they hired the consulting company, Sweet Baby Inc.? Who is to say? But what I can tell you is that the character was initially supposed to be white, was race swapped, and that Sweet Baby Inc. was involved. The rest, quite frankly, is speculation. The other thing that needs to be pointed out is that these SJWs that were complaining about all this stuff during Gamergate were in college. And since it's been the better part of a decade at this point, they have since graduated and made their way into the workforce, going and spreading their ideology. They have made it into marketing departments. They have made it onto dev teams, and they're the ones who are pushing all of this. So here's an example of what I'm talking about. This is Jess Negron, who is the founder and creative director over at Remedy Games, and she has several spicy tweets that were to go over. The first one says, and this is in response to what is going on with Sweet Baby Inc., but maybe a diversity cabal would be a good thing, actually. Baby, racist will not ever be my target market. At this point, calling people racist is just code for people who I don't like. Not the clueless racist telling me they'll only be supportive if the games are separate but equal. If it wasn't for these people going and hijacking these corporations, pushing their ideology, there wouldn't be a need for companies like Sweet Baby Inc. And for the companies that were resistant to the ideology, well, they just simply employ the strong arm tactics that we've seen coming from Anita Sarkeesian, along with the CEO of Sweet Baby Inc., Ken Belair. More information that we get about what is going on with Sweet Baby Inc., the more that these journals have to go and run interference. And what they don't want us doing is pulling back the curtain to see what is truly going on. Because to them, an informed customer is a very dangerous one. Anyway, folks, this is my take. What is yours? What are your thoughts about this whole Sweet Baby Ink situation? Leave a comment down below and hit that like button. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe if you're new to the channel. There is another video popping up right about now talking about Sweet Baby Ink. I suggest you go and check it out and I'll catch you next time, folks.